Welcome to Screw the Commute, the entrepreneurial podcast dedicated to getting you out of the car and into the money with your host, lifelong entrepreneur and multimillionaire, Tom Antion. Hey, everybody, it's Tom here with episode 25 of Screw the Commute podcast. This is going to be about how to automate your business. If you missed episode 24, Scott Haskins gets big contracts for his unique business right off his website, and I taught him how to do it. And another thing is, his wife's name is not Commute. You'll see what I'm talking about on episode 24. All right, the sponsor for today is How to Automate Your Business eBook, the seven-figure guide to getting and handling lots of customers without pulling your hair out. This book gives you lots of nitty-gritty detail and screenshots on what I'm talking about today. You can check it out at greatinternetmarketing.com forward slash automate, and it'll be in the show notes. All right, let's get to the main topic. Back around 2002, I got to $1.2 million bucks a year with one part-time temp person who came in one day a week. At the time, I think I had anywhere from 100,000 to 150,000 subscribers. I can't really remember. I don't know how many thousand customers, and I was doing a pretty brisk business online. Now, how can a person possibly handle that many people? Well, the answer is automation. There's so many cheap and free tools to help you do things. Some didn't even exist back then, but developers are thinking up new tools all the time. I love developers who slave over programming for months at a time to create stuff that could make us screw the commuters rich. Now, today, I'm going to cover the following topics, at least part of them. Responding to customers, selling more automatically, working faster. All right, let's get into responding to customers. I'm considered lightning fast responding not only to customers, but to inquiries from not yet customers. This speed and reputation for speed has made me lots of money and taken away lots of money from my competitors. Really, people can't believe how fast I usually respond. The only time I can't is if I'm on a plane with no Wi-Fi or on a consultation with a student or on stage speaking. I even was taking questions off an automated webinar while sitting on the ground, leaning up against a tree while deer hunting. (laughs) I mean, it's no, it's no wonder I've never gotten a deer, All right? I mean, a buck could have walked right up to me and poked me with his antlers, and I'd have told him, quit bothering me, I'm taking care of a customer. <laughs> and speaking of hunting, I probably never will get anything but fresh air as I clomp through the woods, um, <laughs> making enough noise to break a deer's eardrums. <laughs> I, I swear I heard some deer talking to each other. And one of them said, I didn't know there were any elephants in these parts. (laughs) That was my deer impression, in case you didn't notice. (laughs) Anyway, the faster you respond, the more likely the person will do business with you or keep doing business with you. That's just flat-out truth in my experience over many years. You should be excited about this because your competitors are most likely getting worse at this. I couldn't believe it. I saw a couple days ago some kind, of, some kind of important service. I can't remember what it was, but they said, we'll get back to you within three business days. <laughs> are you kidding me? I could buy Amazon's entire inventory and it would be sitting on my porch in two days. Also, have you ever filled out a website form knowing no one's ever going to get back to you? And they won't. They won't even get it or they'll ignore it and to heck with you. I'm going to show you some ways, without breaking a sweat, you can get that great reputation for quick responses to customers and prospects. All right, the first tool was shown to me in 1997 by my first young geek. I still use it to this day. I was complaining about typing the same answers to questions over and over again. I started keeping the answers in a file to cut and paste them. But even that was a hassle and totally broke my train of thought when I had to go looking for one of the answers. 
So I kept complaining until the young geek got sick of it, and 10 minutes later, he had me using short keys, and that's at shortkeys.com. If you aren't using this or something like it, you're crazy. All you do is put in a short key combination like R9 or T7 or A5 or whatever, and the program will type in thousands of words for you. I don't even think there is an actual limit. We tried to figure it out last year when I wrote the Automate Your Business ebook. Roughly how many keystrokes this program has saved me? We came up with about 7 million keystrokes. I guarantee you this program saved me from getting carpal tunnel syndrome. I highly suggest you have your employees using it too. Why should you pay them to make typos and type the same stuff over and over again? You could definitely increase their productivity greatly by making this program and its use mandatory. Now, short keys is just for the PC, but there is one for the Mac called Keyboard Maestro. Keyboard Maestro, and we'll have it in the show notes. I've had some people poo-poo this and say, well, Tom, Microsoft Word has an autofill function. Well, first of all, it doesn't type in tons of text for you, and it only works in Microsoft Word. Short keys and keyboard maestro work in all your programs. All right, the next thing, most of my correspondence is through email. This is right in front of your face, and I'll bet not 1% of the people listening to this have ever even thought about this or used it. I'm talking about signature files. For those of you that don't know, a signature file is a file that can be manually or automatically inserted to your email. Typically, it has your name, phone number, website address, and maybe a brief advertising blurb. Here's the thing. A good email program has unlimited numbers of signature files available to you. And guess what? There's no law that says it has to be used as a signature. You can have any kind of text you want in there. My rule of thumb is if I get a question more than once, I make the answer a signature file. I probably have about 400 of them in my Outlook email program. I don't have to remember any key combinations either. I just click insert and then I click signature, insert signature, and pick the one I want out of a list. And you can name them so they're easy to find and typically depending on the version of the program you have, the ones you use the most will rise to the top of the list. This one tip can outrageously increase your speed and save you typing. If you don't forward this episode to 50 of your friends and colleagues, I don't know what's wrong with you. <laughs> this tip, that tip is pure gold. So those last two are really, really powerful things that you should be implementing today. All right, let me talk a little bit about selling more automatically. I covered this very extensively in episode 22 on upselling. You really need to go back and listen to that episode. I talked about upselling at the point of purchase, upselling immediately after the sale, and upselling way after the sale. Now, you need a good shopping cart system that includes autoresponders to do these things. But as you listen to my various episodes, you're going to hear me talk a lot about autoresponders and how powerful they are. I'll probably do an entire episode on them in the future. What I want to encourage you to do is take the steps to put these automatic helpers and selling tools into play. The time you take doing it is really worth it. For instance, some of my autoresponder series were written nearly 15 years ago, and they're still working for me today. I'd say that's a pretty good ROI, or return on investment of your time. None of these things are going to work automatically until you put them into play and turn them on. So to sell more automatically, you're going to put various upsell mechanisms into place, and you're going to have autoresponders going out with e-courses, sales pitches, customer service messages that make people want to spend more money with you while you're doing something else. Now let me give you a couple sidebars here. Make sure for your higher priced product, you provide a finance option. I'll use the word Uh, selling automatically here loosely because when somebody sees that they can not have to pay for something right away, they automatically want to buy. (laughs) 
Okay. They want to jump on a bandwagon and buy it if they know they can stretch the payments out. I have made a fortune with this, and again, it's, it'll be covered in other episodes. The second sidebar to remind people about, PayPal credit. This auto, also makes them automatically want to buy. This is a re, really great service. You can get paid your full price for your product up to the credit limit of the buyer, of course. And the buyer gets no interest and no payments for six months. What a deal. And I believe you don't have recourse. In other words, if they don't make the payments, PayPal has to go after them, not you. You still got your money. So it's really a great deal. All right. So check out episode 22 for all those automatic upselling techniques. Now, working faster. The first thing I would highly encourage you to do is go to two or more monitors on your desktop or laptop system. Every student of mine that has done this just raves about how wonderful it is. They don't have to open and minimize windows all day long. I actually have four monitors in my big office. I pretty much look like Captain Kirk from Star Trek, all right? But I'll put a picture of that in the show notes for you. But you have to jump through a few technical hoops to have four monitors. But any laptop or desktop, either Mac or PC, can easily use two monitors. The settings are in the software in the control panel for PC, and I don't know how Macs work. So, but uh, you, you all that use Macs are geniuses anyway, so you'll figure it out. Here's what I hear. But Tom, what do you need four monitors for? Well, website open on one, word processor on another, email on another, and tennis channel. <laughs> On, on the dual TV monitor, <laughs> all right? I haven't minimized a window in years. <laughs> this saves so much time. All right, next thing is computer shortcuts. Both Macs and PCs have more shortcuts than you could ever use in 10 lifetimes. My geek showed me one one time. It was just awesome. On Windows, up until at least Windows 7, I don't know past that, if you hold the Windows graphic key down near the lower left of your keyboard and hit the D key, it takes you right to your desktop. Hit it again, it takes you right back where you were. <laughs> this is awesome with a capital W. <laughs> All right. So here's what I suggest to my students. Type into Google either Windows shortcuts or Mac shortcuts. Pick out one that you know you could use and force yourself to use it every day all day for three days straight. You will then own that shortcut. Do this every three days with a new shortcut for a month. At the end of the month, you will have 10 shortcuts that you own, and I guarantee you will be way faster than you are now on your computer. Do it for two months, and you will be screamingly fast. Do it for three months, and you've just saved your fingers from now till eternity, okay? Now, saving all this time means you can get your work done in less time, or you can get more work done in the same amount of time. Either way is good. All right, let's tap on some cell phone shortcuts, okay? So many of you have a good handle on running your computer and maybe using some shortcuts. But what I've seen, and I'm including myself in this, is that all of that efficient computer usage goes out the window when it comes out to your smartphone. In fact, I fully believe the reason they're called smartphones is because they make you feel so stupid to try to use them. <laughs> so I'm going to give you some instructions on how to use short keys kind of functions on an iPhone. For other phones, just Google Android shortcuts or whatever kind of smartphone you have. The first thing I hear when I go into this topic is, Tom, why should I bother? I can just talk into the phone. Oh, is that right? How about this scenario? Your spouse is waiting for you so both of you can go to your anniversary dinner. You're in a meeting at work. Try saying this to your smartphone while you're in the meeting. The boss is an a-hole and is keeping us over. <laughs> I'm not sure that's the best thing to do in that situation. <laughs> or maybe 
it will give you a forced jump start on starting your own business and screwing the commute when your boss throws you out of the place. <laughs> so maybe a quick pre-programmed smartphone shortcut would work better for you when you're in places where it's not appropriate to call Siri for help. Oh, I have a, a cute Siri story. My bookkeeper, Jennifer, has a deal with her husband and two little boys that on Mother's Day, they make her breakfast in bed. This past Mother's Day, her husband had to be out of town, and the two little boys were tackling the breakfast. When they asked her what she wanted to drink, she said hot tea. <laughs> this cracks me up every time I think of it. A little while later, she heard the littlest one saying, Siri, how do you boil water? <laughs> I love those kids. Okay, for an iPhone, here's how you can start putting in shortcuts. If you're on an Android, just type into Google Android. I, I think I said shortcuts before, but I, I really meant Android text replacement. And there'll be plenty of tutorials. All right, so on an iPhone, don't do this and wreck your car, please. Just do it later, and we're going to have a graphic of this and, some, and all the instructions in the show notes. This is episode, what is this? I forget, 20... 25, I think. Episode 25. Let me double check. Yep, episode 25. So, first of all, launch set the settings app. Tap general. Tap keyboard. Tap text replacement. Tap on the plus in the top right corner. In the phrase field, type in the entire phrase you'd like to create a shortcut for. The boss is an a-hole. He's keeping us over. Or whatever you're going to put. In the shortcut field, type in the snippet you want to be replaced by the phrase. So, so maybe you put uh, BA for boss's a-hole, you know, <laughs> or, or B1. You know, it doesn't matter as long as you remember it. And then tap save at the top right. Now, when you want to use the shortcut, just type the shortcut, and the entire text will show in what they call the predictive text bubble. It's just a little thing that comes up says, hey, do you want this to be there where you just type the shortcut? And then if you hit the space bar, the whole thing of text goes in for you. And another cool tip, when you want to put a symbol in the message, just hold down the one, two, three key, and you'll get access to the symbols. Slide your finger to the symbol you want and release your finger. The symbol gets put in, and you'll still be at the main keyboard for typing. All right. There's some great automation tools for you. They have meant, has to be millions of dollars using these kinds of tools over many years, saving me millions of dollars in labor costs and time and lost opportunities. So if you want a bunch more automation techniques with more in-depth info on how to use them, including all the ones you saw today, check out my inexpensive ebook, How to Automate Your Business, the seven-figure guide to getting and handling lots of customers without pulling your hair out. That's over in the show notes. All right, that was episode 25 of Screw the Commute podcast and episode 26, the producer of the American Entrepreneur documentary, plus 37 others will be here. Her name is Terry Marie, and she is awesome. So we'll catch you all on the next episode.